Hey everyone, Reed here with Big Strong Book, and today we're going to be talking about The Transmigration of Timothy Archer by Philip K. Dick. This is the fourth and final novel collected in the third volume of the Library of America series of 13 of Philip K. Dick's novels. This is Vallis and later novels. And of course, Transmigration is the final Philip K. Dick novel. Final completed. Uh, the, I believe this was published maybe a month or two after he died in 1982. Um, and he, he was writing a novel called An Owl in Daylight uh, when he died, but it was incomplete and it's never really been complete or, or published in any fashion, which is probably for the best. Um, because I guess for better or for worse, this seems like a, a, a decent, you know, final statement. Uh, but I, I get to that uh, his, some of his more literary fiction oriented novels uh, that he wrote, you know, in the 50s, 60s, maybe even 70s, uh, weren't published or they, they were completed, but they weren't published until about, you know, 20 years or so after he died. Uh, and kind of fitting because the transmigration of Timothy Archer definitely fits within the reign of uh, literary fiction, postmodern fiction, whatever you want to call it, because this is, it is, there's not really any, I don't think there's any science fiction uh, present in this work. So, I mean, it, it, it is called uh, kind of, or it is referred to as the last uh, novel of the Vallis trilogy, and yes, I, I, that that's an okay, uh, I guess, grouping. Um, the Divine Invasion fits more with Vallis than this one does, uh, but just in terms of general themes, you know, searching for God, uh, that, you know, that's probably as close uh, a, a link as you can really find. Um, and I, I don't know how I felt about this. I'll just put it that way. Um, I knew what the gist of the plot would be going into this, um, that it would be a semi quasi biographical take on uh, the bishop, the Episcopalian bishop, James Pike, who rose to fame, if not a little notoriety, um, in the 60s for, you know, his, his for the time, unconventional beliefs, or certainly for a member of, of, of the cloth. Uh, and I think he was a big proponent for uh, civil rights, uh, race relations, um, but he was also, I think, you know, a chain-smoking alcoholic. I could be wrong there. Uh, and had affairs with women. Uh, and again, I, I think, I don't know for sure. Um, but then, and, and he was a close friend or acquaintance at least with Dick um, in the 60s. And I think Pike... Uh, officiated one of Dick's many marriages. Uh, he officiated the, one of the many weddings. Uh, one of, I don't think, multiple. Um, but Pike, again, I, I, th I think he was uh, accused of heresy, um, might have been s stripped of the cloth, a sh um, not shorn, what, whatever, that, whatever that term is. Uh, when a, a member of a, like a, a priest or a, a bishop or a member of a clergy of especially a, a, a sect of the Christian faith or de defrocked, there we go, defrocked. Um, I don't know if he was defrocked, um, but controversy, I think, in terms of the, the types of ideas of what he was exploring. Anyways, um, I th he, he traveled to Israel uh, with, I think, his not his wife, maybe his girlfriend at the time, um, and wanted to, I think, re or try to find the route or recreate the route 
that was the uh, the 40 days and 40 nights that Jesus spent uh, meditating in the desert. And so they drove out into the desert with kind of a, a crappy rental car, uh, a, a crappy map, and two bottles of Coke or something like that for a, a journey into the desert. And <clears throat> they their, their car, I think, got stuck in the sand and... Um, they were nowhere near any uh, remote towns or villages. Uh, and so they started to, to head out on foot. Um, I think they got a little ways. Pike started to, he just stayed there, decided to rest. And then his girlfriend, wife, whoever, his partner, uh, kept going. And she actually was able to make it to a village. And they were able to find Pike, uh, but he had, uh, I think... I think they found him, uh, but he had, regardless, he had died um, of, I assume, dehydration, exhaustion, the elements, exposure. Um, so, you know, a very controversial and enigmatic figure who died, a, I guess, a very, almost for a person like that, I wouldn't say a fitting death, but uh, maybe it, the nature of the way he died in, in search of of something beyond himself, of trying to get in touch with uh, the divine, um, he perished in his quest. So no doubt that is an interesting story for anybody to approach, but it, it meant a lot, I think, for Dick to write this story about one of his friends. It was, you know, the, the, the theme of, of searching for God and... Um, trying to reach into the divine was something he already had explored. And so, you know, again, the, the, it, it feels in ways like a natural progression. I just think I, I, I liked the, the, this is about, at least in this version, the Library of America version, this is about 200 pages long. I'll just say I liked the last 100 pages than I liked the first. The first 100, I was not a fan at all. I just felt it was just kind of going on a loop and I'm like I get it I get it I get it um so essentially that this book is uh told from it's a first person point of view told from the perspective uh of this woman named Angel Archer and she is uh the wife but then it's also revealed at the beginning the widow uh of a man named uh Jeff Archer um who was the son of the bishop Timothy Archer, who's the title character. Um, and this, you know, concerns a little bit. She's a record store owner. Um, and, you know, she she finds herself at odd and, and, and Timothy and, and Tim Archer is such a kind of this, or at least crazed, not maybe not crazed, but a, this obsessive um, character and he has been accused of heresy. He's kind of this, this bad boy of the Episcopalian church. And um, the, uh, it, it's revealed at the beginning, it, it, or it's, it's framed um, kind of the, the day after uh, John Lennon dies. And the, the protagonist, uh, Angel, she's in a very dark place in her life and it's revealed, which is, the, and this did, happen. I think this was very true to what happened in James Pike's life. Um, his son committed suicide, his wife committed suicide, or in this, in the case of this, his partner. But it's, it's revealed very quick in the novel that that is what hap has happened. His Jeff Archer has committed suicide. Um, Timothy Archer's partner, uh, Kirsten, she has um, committed suicide. But, and, and, and it kind of shuttles back and forth a little bit, but it just, the, it, this is a novel that really takes its time to find its footing. Um, and I, I read this very quick, I'll just say that. I mean, it's, it's short, but I, I read it quick, um, mainly because I was just very dissatisfied with the first 100 pages. And I knew I wanted to, to, to get through it. Just, it, it's, I, I love Dick's novels. Uh, I knew this was his last. I wanted, I wasn't just gonna throw in the towel and try to reapproach it. I wanted to just get through it because, again, 
I, I like his novels, I like his writing, this is his final book, and it's not too long. Um, so I knew I would just go full speed ahead. And when, so the not, so it, it starts off kind of, you know, jumbled, at least from a future perspective, and then it goes back to a more chronological telling. And when it gets to the point where Jeff dies and Timothy Archer, the father, has to grieve. He has to, he has to grieve the death of his son. And he is then so convinced that he has found a way to um, get in touch with his son. And I think that then he uses that to uh, then justify or... or it is it is the the reason why why God exists why why Jesus is 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 the way is the answer and so he, uh, Archer becomes so obsessed with this and it kind of the uh, the, the trademark uh, Dickian humor I think reaches its full power and force when you get into a uh, they they almost they go to they hold it they go to a psychic and they have a little seance. Um, where they're trying to get in contact with uh, with Jeff, and it's 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 you know trademark dick humor, um, and so that helped me to um, kind of reorient and r understand fully what the story was was really about. At the end of the day, it's about the how a, a man's search for God collides with the death of a loved one and just the, these kind of the, these larger than life personalities who just they, they try to find it's about searching for answers it's about searching for answers when tragedies occur in your life um and then he's kind of bent hell uh, timothy archer's then pun intended i guess hell bent on uh trying to find the answers even more when his uh partner kirsten commits suicide because there's a little bit of an affair going on, or maybe an affair between Jeff and uh, and uh, Kirsten, and that is what almost sends him into this this tailspin. And um, there's there's a lot of uh, illusions. I, I don't I don't necessarily want to say metafiction. There's maybe a lot of intertextuality here, and I might be misusing that term. Um, or that study, uh, but you know th this book dives a lot into works from the Beatles and um, and mentioning of things like uh, Dante's Divine Comedy and try and and th there, there's almost like a a part in this where the the protagonist is wondering I think why reading works like. I think she was reading Purgatorio, uh, one of the th three comedies, or one of the three parts of the, the comedy, um, and why that can do so much for her and broaden her understanding of the world, whereas the rest of the book she's reading Howard the Duck comics. Um, there, there are moments like that, I think, where, where, the, where this shines, where it's not only is it about this, you know, the, these people on the edge who are who are pushed there by their grief and by their constant search and quest for knowledge, quest for answers, and uh, to you know, uh, for for conclusions to tie uh, to tie a great big bow on everything, but also just in how that relates to our art and what art can do for us and how it can you know maybe not answer those questions, but it can illuminate our understanding of the world because that's a lot of what it's about. Um, various religious texts are brought up and, and that that um, perspective, that idea is kind of brought in uh, through those. Um, so, you know, at, at the end of this, at the end of reading this, I think it's a little bit of a, of a mix for me. Um, you know, I, it, it, it makes sense that he is, that Dick got to this point in his career. Um, I, and maybe I didn't read this book at, at, at the right time, um, or maybe I didn't read it slow enough and really let it wash over me. Um, so, you know, specifically, and, and in terms of how it relates, in terms of my enjoyment of it, uh, to the other three 
novels, uh, Maze of Death, Valis, and The Divine Invasion from, uh, from this volume, um, I think if you're just comparing apples to apples in, in this sense, it is, it's, it's the worst of the four in my opinion. Um, part of that might have to do with the fact that it is so different. It's, even though Valis is probably structurally the stranger and, and a uh, bigger case for a black sheep out of the bunch. Um, I don't know. It's just, I think maybe, maybe not, a, I don't want, I, I don't want to say like as, as a short story or a novella or something, it would have been stronger. I just, and, or, or maybe I'm expecting too much of it because it was, it is his last novel. And because it's his last novel, you're, even though of course it's not, it, he didn't know he was dying, even though th there is a sense of finality to um, a lot of these final works, he had kind of re, he had entered into that, to a new phase in his career um, that was taking him places, and this is where it took him, ult at the end of the day, because he didn't finish An Owl in Daylight. Um, so yeah, that's my uh, impression of this. It's, you know, hard hard to really have, I think, a solid opinion on. For, for me, it's hard for me to have a solid opinion on this. Um, to know how I feel about it, too, it's just, it's kind of battling back and forth. This is, this is I think, it, it's, pr uh, quite honestly, it, it's probably my least favorite of his uh, that I've read. Uh, I've, you know, read over 10 of his novels, and, and th this is kind of a, a lower rung one for me. I know there are a lot of people, a lot of uh, dickheads out there that would disagree with me, and that's you know that that's all right. Um, to each their, to each their own. Um, but it just it 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 didn't do it for me. Although it didn't, because of how the plot progresses, and then it allows kind of the the purpose of the narrative. It, it almost recontextualizes it for the audience, or at least makes it more clear of you know, the, this, this grieving father, as I've said, the grieving father searching for answers, um, which I, I liked that angle of it. It's just, it took a while to get there. And, um, I, I would not recommend this book to, to those who are even just a little familiar with Dick. Again, I've, I've read over 10, I've read, you know, probably over a fourth of his novels. I read over 10. And even this felt, out of almost borderline out of reach for me, even more out of reach than something like Vallis. Vallis was, if you've, you know, read a good chunk of his novels, if you've even followed along with the Library of America, kind of going volume to volume, novel by novel by novel, you're prepared for something like Vallis. And especially if you have the context for what, um, for what he was going through in his personal life at the time. You're, you're prepared for Valis. Valis makes sense, and Valis is fantastic. This is, it's just, yeah. So, I, I don't think this should not, Val, Valis should be viewed as kind of the final masterwork, I think. Valis should be viewed as as that final peak. Not so with this. It's, it's interesting, and maybe with more time and study, I could get something out of it. Um, but I don't see that happening for me now. But that's all right. Um, that's just, you know, it wasn't for me at this moment uh, in my life right now. Um, but, and it, I, I think anybody knows that, you know, it would have been very fascinating to see what, where this trajectory was going. Maybe if I, if I didn't like this so much, maybe I wouldn't have liked any other, you know, theoretical novel that he would have written years down the line. Um, and we'll never know. But we do know this is, in print at least, the final statement from him. So, that's about all I have to say on that. Transmigration of Timothy Archer. If you have read it, let me know what you think. And as always, I will see you guys next time.